Welcome back for another video on the best YouTube channel ever. Today's video will be about Watts gang history. When Watts was primarily an African American community, the area around the Jordan Downs housing project area was controlled by Grape Street Crips. As more Hispanics moved into the Watts area, they formed their own gang, the Watts Vario Primera. Vario Primera, which focused on the area to the south of Jordan Downs. One of Vario Primera's two main cliques was the Grape Street Clique, which began to traffic into narcotics in association with Grape Street Crips. The Grape Street Clique's association with the African American Grape Street Crips gang caused tension between the Grape Street Clique and the other major clique in Vario Primera, the Wigan Avenue Clique. Ultimately, the Grape Street Clique split off from Vario Primera to become a separate gang, Vario Grape. The members of Vario Grape considered members of the former Wigan Avenue Clique, now known as the Watts Colonial Wigan Gang, to be enemies. During 2008, there was a rivalry in the Watts area between Hispanic gangs allied with the Grape Street Clique and the Wigan Clique. The suicidal Watts gang allied with Grape Street. Their historic enemies were the Diaz Linus gang, who were allied with Wigan. Julio Midge Otero was a Grape Street gang member. His older brother, Cesar Crow Otero, who was involved in the foundational events leading up to the murder, but who was not a party in the crime, was a member of the Suicidal Watts gang, allied with Grape Street. Diana Reyes was Cesar Otero's girlfriend or common-law wife. Fernando Frito Quintana also was a member of the Suicidal Watts gang. Moses Drowsy Herrera, who was involved in the foundational events leading up to the murder, was a member of the Watts Colonial Wigan Gang, which was a rival and enemy of the Grape Street-related gangs to which Julio Caesar, Diana, and Fernando were connected to. Samuel Danger Zambrano also was a member of the Watts Colonial Wigan Gang. On December 18, 2008, LAPD officers drove their marked patrol vehicle to the area of Wilmington Avenue and 110th Street in Los Angeles in response to a radio call. When the officers arrived at the scene, they were directed to the murder victim, Samuel Zambrano. Zambrano was lying in a driveway, unconscious and bleeding out of the side of his head. The officers then started trying to contain and preserve the crime scene and to get witness statements. No one in the area could or would provide information. They were really uncooperative. When the paramedics took Zambrano away, they reported that it appeared Zambrano had suffered either multiple stabbing or gunshot wounds, including one to his left temple. On December 20, 2008, the detectives spoke with members of the Zambrano family who provided several names of persons with possible information about the incident. The names included Moses Herrera, Cesar Otero, and Julio Otero. On December 23, 2008, the detectives conducted a door-to-door -door canvas of the houses near the crime scene. No one gave any indication that they had seen the crime. On December 30, 2008, the detectives again conducted door-to-door -door knocks on a 110th Street. While they were in front of MC's residence, MC came outside and stated that he had seen what happened. MC said that Cesar Otero and Moses Herrera were in a fight. A group of gang members from Cesar Otero's gang, the Suicidals, were on the north side of the street, and a group of gang members from Moses Herrera's gang, the Watts Colonias, were on the south side of the street. Moses Herrera was getting the better of Cesar when Julio Otero, Cesar's brother, ran up to a Watts Colonial gang member on the south side of the street. The next thing the MC knew, Zambrano just fell to the ground. MC thought that Julio Otero had just knocked Zambrano out. MC did not know at the time that Julio Julio Otero hit Zambrano with the weapon. MC said several times that he did not want to go to court to talk about the crime. On January 2, 2009, the detectives returned to MC residence with photographs. When they arrived, MC told the detectives his house was recently shot up. MC also relayed that after the shooting, he heard Caesar Otero yelling out, Suicidal Watts. MC expressed concern about testifying in court because something might happen to his son. Detectives observed several bullet holes in MC's residence and what appeared to be an impact mark from a large caliber weapon on a car by the residence. The sunroof of the car also appeared to have been shot out. On January 12, 2009, the detectives returned to MC's residence and asked MC additional questions. During that interview, MC told the following version of events. Caesar Otero had been fighting a big youngster on the north side of the street. The victim got stabbed on the south side of the street. The victim was on the opposite side of the street from the fight when Otero rushed over and attacked him. 
The victim had not been involved in the earlier fight at all. The victim did not provoke the attack. Otero went across the street and attacked the victim, and after the victim fell, the other suicidals backed up, talking big trash, suicidals. On January 15, 2009, detectives and other officers executed a search warrant at a residence in which Julio Otero lived with his brother Cesar Otero, the loser in the street fight. Quintana also lived at the residence. The officers recovered guns and ammunition and gang-related materials. On February 26, 2009, detectives met with 14-year-old GE in a police car at a school because GE was reluctant to meet with police. Prior to this meeting, GE had not told anyone what he had witnessed on the night of the stabbing. At the beginning of the interview, GE's demeanor was quiet and somewhat withdrawn. Later during the interview, GE became emotional and his eyes began to water. GE told detectives that on the day of the incident, he was with friends and saw a group of people out including Julio, Caesar, Reyes, and Quintana, both of whom were holding guns. GE stated that Caesar Otero and another guy fought, and then Otero fought with Zambrano. Frito Quintana was standing right there with a the gun. GE saw Otero fighting with Zambrano, and then out of nowhere, he just seen Zambrano drop. Quintana and Reyes watched the fight between Otero and the victim Zambrano. GE saw some people pick up Zambrano and bring him into the yard at MC's house. GE saw blood on Zambrano's head. His eyes were open, but he was not saying anything. After Zambrano fell to the ground, Cesar Otero, Quintana, and Reyes walked together back down Anzac Avenue. One of the men said, don't say anything. The other people who had been on the block, including any young men that accompanied Zambrano, all split up and left the scene. The jury returned verdicts finding all three, Julio Otero, Fernando Quintana, and Diana Reyes guilty on murder with findings that the murder was in the first degree, deliberate and premeditated, and committed to benefit a criminal street gang. The court sentenced Julio Otero to state prison for a term of 50 years to life and Diana Reyes and Fernando Quintana to terms of 25 years to life.